Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice cubic equation. I know this equation looks fairly simple if you know a little bit about polynomials and how to solve them, you could pretty much solve this equation by guess and check. I'll be presenting four methods, even though not all of them are going to be completed because that's going to take forever, but I will still um, show you the ideas. So. Let's start with the fourth method. I don't think we ever started with the fourth method, so this is going to be hopefully the first time we start with the fourth. Anyways, for the fourth method, I'm going to use the cubic formula. But again, like I said earlier, this will not be completed. You can do the rest. So now I'm going to write this first as a full cubic, put everything on the same side, and then we have to set x equals something so that we can get rid of the x squared. And that can be obtained by setting x equal to y minus 2 thirds. And that two, negative 2 thirds comes from this number divided by that number and then negate it. That's the rule. Of course, you have to put a minus sign in front of it in order for the to work. Otherwise, positives is not going to do it. And then if you do the replacement, you're going to get something that looks like this. Okay. And then by working this out, to keep a long story short, because this is, gonna, this is a very long story, you're going to get something like this. y cubed minus 4 thirds y equals 65 over 27. Notice that y squared canceled out. That was the goal. And then by likening this to an identity, we come up with the cubic formula. So a plus b cubed, if you subtract 3ab plus 3ab times a plus b from this, which is the term, two terms in the middle in binomial theorem, and then calling this a plus b thing y, you are coming up with the cubic formula or the method for solving cubics in general. And then from here we get the following. The coefficient of y is the coefficient of y here. So these two things are the same, which means a, b is equal to 4 ninths. And then from this constant, we get a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 65 over 27. Things are going to get a little messy. That's why I'll just leave it to, the, to you to finish up. But you can cube both sides, plug it in, and you'll get a quadratic. And then y is going to be a plus b. Good luck with that. That's the fourth method. OK, let's go and jump to the first method now. After the fourth, obviously, that makes sense, does it? I don't know. Let's just fast forward or rewind to the first. So for my first method, what was the original problem? x cubed plus 2x squared equals 3. You probably noticed that something um, easy uh, this equation has an easy solution, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything on the same side as before and then split this 2x squared as negative x squared plus 3x squared. And guess what that's going to do? That's going to give me a, what's it called? A factorable cubic. And now you can go ahead and take out x squared, x minus 1, and then 3 times x squared minus 1, which is x minus 1 times x plus 1 from difference of 2 squares. And then if you take out the x minus 1, you're going to get x squared plus 3x plus 3, because you're supposed to distribute the 3 here. And then this is going to be it. Obviously, this tells you a x equals 1 is a solution. That's probably something that you already knew. And that's one of the solutions. The other solution is going to come from the quadratic. Guess what? That quadratic does not have real solutions, but no worries, we're going to have some complex solutions for x, okay? You could also use the rational root theorem, kind of check for integer solutions, uh, looking at the constant here, what divides 3 plus minus 1 plus minus 3, so on and so forth. That could also give you an idea, okay? Great, let's proceed with the second method, and then we'll look at the third. The second method is pretty much using the same cubic, breaking it down in a slightly different way. Obviously, some of these equations can be broken down in different ways, like this can be, this time, instead of breaking down the 2x squared, I want to break down the negative 3. And the idea behind it is, this is a 2, that's a 3, so can I kind of match them up? So that's going to be like minus 1, minus 2, makes minus 3, so now we have difference of two cubes, which is nice, and that's why this is a different method, even though some people are going to be like, oh, it's the same thing. No, nope, it's not the same thing. 2 times x squared minus 1 again, that's going to be difference of two squares. And now we have x minus 1 again, but this gives us x squared plus x plus 1 plus, now I got to distribute the 2 over 2x plus 2, 
equals zero and that gives me x minus one multiplied by x squared plus three x plus three as before. Obviously that should be no surprise, right? With this fourth method, we did try to use the cubic formula. Obviously things get really messy, but guess what? At the end, you're gonna get a nice solution. With the first method, we broke down the two x squared into two pieces like this, and that gave us two factors, one of which is a quadratic, and we solved it using the quadratic formula, one real, two complex solutions. With the second method, we did a different breakdown, but we ended up with the same equation. Of course, you're, supposed, you're not supposed to get a different one because this is the same problem that we started with. So from here, again, x is going to be 1, and x is going to be, what was the root? Negative 3 plus minus square root of 3i divided by 2. By the way, this is a special number. I don't know if uh, this problem can be solved in a slightly different way, such as replace x with a plus bi, and try to solve for a and b from there. But this problem is kind of special because if you look at the numerator and try to find tangent theta for the angle that this number represents, you're going to notice that it's actually a special angle because if you divide, for example, negative root 3 by 3, that should give you the tangent of a known angle, right? Okay, great. So hopefully uh, you can also write this in polar form if you want it, but I don't think that's necessary for this problem. Okay, so far so good. So we got three solutions to our cubic using different ways to break it down. And what do we have next? Next we have the third method. I don't know why I saved it for last. I hope you find you like it and you're gonna let me know which method you like better. Actually not the best, but I'd like you to rank it. Like can you order um, in the order you like them, can you please rank these solutions? Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and proceed with the third method, and then we'll finish up, I think, with that graph. So, for, uh, for my third method, again, let me go ahead and put everything on the same side, so one step ahead. Now, we could find, like I said earlier, we could use the RRT rational root theorem and find the potential solution. If you look at plus minus 1 and plus minus 3, you probably realize that x equals 1 is a solution. Why? Because the sum of the coefficients of this polynomial, if you take a look at it, 1 plus 2 minus 3 is 0. That tells you x equals 1 is a solution, and that tells you x minus 1 is a factor by factor theorem. Cool. So you can kind of try to extract x minus 1, and the general way to do it is as follows x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3. Now, it can be broken down as follows. You can write this as x cubed and then subtract x squared because I do want to get x minus 1 as a factor, and that's what it does. And then I have to follow up with 3x squared because I had originally 2x squared, but this needs to be followed by negative 3x. And then, of course, that needs to be followed by positive 3x because I don't have any x in the equation. And then minus 3 will be the finale. And that's equal to zero. Now I can factor by grouping. Notice that this breakdown is different from the first method and the, I think, second, right? This is the third. So that would be different from first and second. And now it's going to be x squared times x minus 1, 3x times x minus 1, and 3 times x minus 1 equals zero. And from here, if you take out an x minus 1, you're going to get the exact same equations with the exact same solutions. So there's no reason we should beat a dead horse. Okay, those are the solutions. Let's get, take a look at the graph and we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll finish up. Okay, so this is my cubic. As you can see, it kind of curves. It has a maximum and a minimum, but its maximum value, local maximum, is less than 3. You could also evaluate that by differentiating this function, setting it equal to 0, and then finding the roots, making a table, so on and so forth. There's so many ways to look at it. I can't emphasize this enough. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.